What's up everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we can revoke tokens on the server side. In the previous videos, we looked at how we could allow users to have access to our application by using their access tokens. We also looked at how they could regain their access when their tokens are expired by using their refresh tokens. Now in this video, we're going to be making use of Redis, which is an in-memory data store to help us act as a block list for the tokens that we shall revoke on our server side. Now, if you're to look at my rest folks right here, I have this error, which is an internal server error. And this error is occurring because we are trying to make use of an expired token to refresh our token. So the problem is that we are having an error or a bug, or an issue that I left in the code in the previous video. And that is arising from this check where I was checking if our token is valid. So if we check, this is calling the method token valid, but it's not taking the token that is going to be checked. So in this case, we've decoded the token. And after decoding the token, we go ahead and check if its data is none or not. So what I'm going to do is to first of all fix this error by providing the token. So if we try to access this with an expired token, of course, we shall get our exception being raised. So let's go ahead and now set up our Redis client. So right here in my terminal, I'm going to begin by installing IO Redis, which is going to be our async IO based client for Redis. And what this is going to allow us to do is to access the different methods to interact with Redis from our Python side. So I'm going to say pip install, and in our case, we're going to say IO Redis. So this will go ahead and collect IO Redis and add it to our virtual environment. After which we shall now go ahead and create the Redis client and then use that client to interact with Redis. So if I go back to my code right here, I'm going to go to my DB folder and inside here is where I'm going to create a file, which I'm going to call redis.py. And this is where we're going to write the code that's specific to Redis. Now that we have our Redis installed, let us go ahead and define some environment variables that are going to help us access Redis. So we shall begin by adding those to our .env. So the first one is going to be our Redis host. And our Redis host in this case is going to be localhost. Now another thing that we may need to set up is going to be our Redis port. So our Redis port is going to be 6379. And once we've done that, then I'm going to go ahead and copy these two and I'll head over to our config because we need to access them from our .env and add them so that we can access them via our config object. So I'll just go ahead and simply copy this. Now I can go ahead and simplify this by saying that our Redis host is going to be a string and also our Redis port is going to be 6379, but it's going to be an integer. So what we have here is we're setting our port to be 6379 in case we haven't provided a port, but that port is going to be an integer. We can do the same thing right here by simply saying that in case we do not provide our Redis host, then our host can be localhost. And this is going to be a string. So let me go ahead and make it one. So once we've defined this, then let's go ahead and set up our Redis client object. So when you head over back to our redis.py inside our DB folder, we shall first of all import IO Redis by saying import IO Redis. Once we've imported IO Redis, then let's go ahead and also import our config object. So we shall say from source.config, we shall import the config object. Once that is imported, then we're going to go ahead and simply create the Redis client object. So we're going to simply call this the Redis token block list, or let's just actually say this is going to be our Redis token block list. We can simply call it our token block list. So we shall say token block list. And this token block list is going to be the object created from Redis. So we shall say IO Redis and shall make use of the strict Redis object. And inside here, we need to go ahead and specify the host. So our host is going to be our local host, but that's going to come from our config dot Redis host. And then we're also going to provide our port. So our port in our case is going to be from config. 
in this case we're going to have our redis port and once we've done that we can also specify our db so our db is going to be db0 and this is going to be our config for our redis so this is just enough for us to get a connection to our redis now we need to define two functions one is going to be to help us add the token to our blacklist and another one is going to be the one to check if this token exists within our block list now we're not going to be storing tokens but rather we're going to be storing their jtis or our jwt ids that we set up when creating these tokens so to do that we're going to now say async and this is going to be add jti so this is going to be add jti to block list and this is going to take in the jti which is going to be a string we don't expect this to return anything so shall specify the return value to be none and in our case we shall just have to come right here and simply await io redis or our token block list so in this case we shall call the set method now this set method is basically one that helps us to store a value using a certain key so it works in a way that we provide the key and then we provide the value and the expiry or the time we want that value to expire so in our case we're going to come at the top of our code right here and then we are going to specify our access or our token expire let's just call it the token expiry so in our case well this is actually our jti expiry so i'll just set it to the jti expiry and this jti expiry is going to be let's say after one hour so we can go ahead and set this to be 3600 seconds and then uh asset here is going to take in our expiry which is going to be our expiry time so it's going to take in the key it's going to take in the value and then it's going to take in the expiry so we're going to go ahead and set that up by coming right here so the name of the key is going to be equal to our jti and then we do not need the value so we can leave the value to be equal to an empty string now for the expiry we're simply going to go ahead and set it to be our expiry here that we've set so that's going to be our jwt expiry and once we've done that this function is just enough for us to go ahead and add our token to our block list or our jti to our block list another one that we're going to carry out is one to check if our token exists within our block list so to do that we shall just come right here and say async and this is going to be def token in block list so this is going to be block list and this is going to just take in our jti which is going to be a string and it shall return a boolean once this is done then we shall simply call our token block list dot in our case we shall say get so this is going to take in the key which is going to be our jti and we can actually call this our jti so we need to check if this jti exists within our redis and once it doesn't exist then we shall return true or false so to do that we shall just simply come right here and say return jti is not none so this can return true or false depending on whether the jti is not none so i can go ahead and do the same thing for every time i say it is not none so for example instead of saying return true if token data we can just say return token data is not none and that will just be enough for us to return whether our token data is true whether our token data is not none or is none so returning token data dot none will return true if it's not none else it will return false so just to avoid that repetition so once we've defined these two methods let's go ahead and make use of them within our dependency so to do that what i'm going to do is to head over to our dependency and at the top right here i'm going to begin by importing our function for checking whether the token exists in our block list so i'll just do that by coming at the top right here and saying from source dot db dot redis we are going to go ahead and import our token 
in block list. Once that has been done, then let's go ahead and simply add this check within our call method. So right after checking if our token is valid, then we're going to go ahead and also check if our token is in our block list. So we shall come right here and say if, in this case, we shall call await token in block list because this is an awaitable or a core routine, then this is going to take in our JTI. So that's going to come from our token data. So we shall say token data. And in our case, since this is a dictionary, we shall access the JTI. And once we've accessed that, then we're going to raise an exception. So I'll copy what we have here, and then I'll paste it right here. So once we have this, then we can simply go ahead and provide the detail so for our case, we're going to provide the detail having the error. And in our case, our error is going to be this token is invalid or has been revoked. Another thing is going to be what the user is going to do in case they get this error. So we shall just give them a hint of how to resolve the error. So we're going to call this the resolution. And in this case, we shall tell them to get a new token. So shall just simply tell them, please get new token. And this will be just enough to throw that error. Another thing we're going to do is to simply add this to our to our invalid or expired token detail. So I'm just simply going to change the way I return these errors by using this format. So I'll just give them a hint also here. I'll just tell them that the token is invalid or expired. And I'll just tell them to get a new token. So this is now going to be a little bit more detailed than simply saying invalid or expired token. So we now see this token is invalid or expired and please get a new token, which is better. So once that has been done, then the next thing is going to be for us to implement the endpoint for revoking a token. Now I'm going to go to our auth routes and inside here, I'm going to create a new route by calling our auth router. So in this case, we can choose to use a post request or a get request or whatever. So I'm just simply going to keep it to a get request since we're going to pass our token in our header, the token that we want to revoke. So in this case, I'll call this our endpoint, which is logout. And I'm going to define this as async dev, then shall call this handler revoke token. Now this is going to take in our token data, or our token details, and this will be making go, making use of our dependencies. Now what I'm going to do is to import our access token bearer, as it's going to give us the details of the token that we want to go ahead and revoke. In our case, we shall come right here and say access token bearer, and this is actually going to be a depend. So this will be a dictionary, and it's going to be a dependency. So we're going to make use of our depends function. And when we've done that, then we shall provide the dependency, which shall be an object of our token bearer. And then inside that is where we're going to get our JTI. So to get our JTI, we shall say that our JTI is going to be token details. And in our case, we shall get our JTI. Our token details will be returned as a dictionary containing the claims that we submitted within our token and once we've got that as a dictionary then we're going to go ahead and grab the jti once we've grabbed the jti then we're going to make use of this function to basically add that token to our block list so to do that we're going to import our function by saying from source dot in this case it's going to be db dot redis then we're going to go ahead and import our add token or add jti to block list so once we have done this, we're going to simply come right here and say, await add JWT to block list. And in this case, we shall provide our JTI. And once that has happened, we shall simply return our JSON response and our detail in this case, or our content is going to be equal to a simple message of logged out successfully. So we're going to simply come right here and say logged out successfully. 
So we're also going to provide the status code, and that status code is going to be equal to status dot http 200 okay this is enough for us to log out a user so let's go ahead and test it out we shall go back to our rest folks right here and we shall create a new request and this request is going to be one for revoking tokens so i just simply say revoke access tokens so inside here is where we're going to provide our url so in our case our url is going to be on the slash logout endpoint or the slash logout path try to get this we are not authenticated so we need to provide our header i'll add our header which is going to be our authorization header and inside here we shall provide bearer and then the token so our token let's go ahead and create a new jwt pair when you try to get this token and use it to maybe get all our books, shall provide this token right here to help us get our books. We can get our books, but when we revoke it, in our case, we shall just send it here. So we have an error. If we try to see what this error is, we're being told that redis.set got an, exp an exp argument so it seems like we are wrong there let's go ahead and check it out if i go back to redis uh, redis.set simply has to take in ex not exp sorry for that if i provide that when you try to make this request again we see that our user has logged out successfully which i called our so let me go ahead and also fix that so we shall say that our user has been logged out successfully and when you try to make this this access token make a request we shall now see that the token is invalid or has been revoked and therefore we need to get a new token so that means that our token is added to our block list and we cannot use it to access any other endpoints on our api so if we try to let's say create a book using the same token We're going to notice the same thing that this token is going to be added to our block list and therefore we cannot use it to make any other requests to our api endpoint i hope you've enjoyed and learned from this video if you've done so please leave a like it helps the videos in the algorithms do not forget to subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next video bye